Hi, my name is Kian Wong and welcome to another edition of The New Millionaire. Today we have with us the world's number one small business guru, Michael Gerber, the author of the highly acclaimed classic, The E-Myth. Over the last 30 years, Michael's works have touched the lives of millions of entrepreneurs and his E-Myth worldwide consulting firm has trained and coached over 70,000 small businesses in over 145 countries. And he's created recently In The Dreaming Room, a place where entrepreneurs and future entrepreneurs can get together to create and manifest their dreams. Today, welcome to our show. Good. Thank you, Ken. Welcome. A pleasure. Now, can you share with us how you discovered your passion? Because this show is all about helping our, our viewers discover their passion. Share us your story. Well, um, it's always a surprise. Um, I was asked to do some work with a friend of mine uh, to visit a client company of his. Um, he owned a small advertising agency in Silicon Valley. This was in 1975. And um, I told him I didn't know anything about business, um, and I didn't. <clears throat> and I to told him also I didn't know anything about technology, and I certainly What was certainly your background before then? If, if well, I was a musician. I was a, um, a, a salesman. Player, right? I was. I was a, <laughs> and, and a damn good one, Keon. And um, a salesperson, and um, a carpenter, and a philosopher, and a poet, and a beatnik, and a hippie. <laughs> I was everything and anything. And um, essentially, I was a wandering Jew looking for myself. And um, I walked into this client company um, after having had all of these experiences, knowing I had no idea what I was doing there. Uh, my friend, who owned the ad agency, said, Michael, you know more than you need to know. Trust me in this. And so I sit, sat down with Bob, who owned the company, and uh, began the process. He asked me, what do you know about my business? I said, nothing, Bob. He said, what do you know about our technology? I said, less than that, Bob. He said, well, Michael, if you don't know anything about my business, if you don't know anything about our products, how can you help me? And I said, I haven't a clue. <laughs> but my friend thinks I can, and you like my friend, and I like my friend, so let's see what happens. Truth is, I had nothing to lose. And that was the truth of my entire life. I had nothing to lose. Everything was an adventure. Everything was new. Everything was um, about to become something that I wasn't clear about. Well, I spent an hour with Bob. And in that process, um, both of my assumptions that I didn't know anything about business and that he did because he owned one were completely turned around. I did know something. And what I knew is that selling is a system. I'd learned that. I also knew that music is a system. I'd learned that, and I also knew that building a house is a system. And I knew that, and I'd been instructed by incredible teachers who taught me that. And in this process, I realized that Bob didn't know that. Bob didn't know that business is a system. But of course, I didn't know that until I came face to face with that reality. And that transformed my life, and of course, Bob's too. So a spark went on, or what actually happened? Yeah, the spark went on. The spark went on. Understand, I mean, I'm, I'm an active mind. Um, you're an active mind. We all have active minds, unless we're um, restricted to the sludge of uh, our unoriginality. So I'm continually creating things. I'm continually looking for what's new. I'm continually uh, asking the question, what's missing in this picture? I'm asking it about my life. I'm asking it about the lives of the people I'm um, working with. I'm asking it about everything and anything that I come face to face with. There's something wrong here. What's missing in this picture? And as you begin to ask that question, you get into the habit of asking that question, which I believe is the truly um, entrepreneurial question of all questions, what's missing in this picture, you begin to discover what it is. So I've actually said that I've been inspired more by people who don't know anything than people who do. I've been inspired more um, rather than by um, the knowers of the world than by the people who are confused by the world because I suddenly am engaged in a conversation with what they're confused by. And as I begin to do that, I begin to see things I never saw before. In your book, The E-Myth, uh, this is the revisited version, 
you pose this question and you say, you know, a lot of small businesses, uh, kind of like people have an entrepreneurial seizure, and why is that? And what can you just give us, uh, you know, some insight into in the work, the consulting work you did with a few clients? You obviously felt well, there's something missing throughout the whole small business community. Well, there is obviously most small businesses fail. Uh, most small businesses What fail. are we talking about? What percentage are we talking about? Uh, well, y you know, it depends upon who you talk to. But essentially, at least you can say that at least 80% of all companies go out of business. And they go out of business before their fifth year. Um, they're almost all out of business by their tenth year. So what's missing in this picture? And if they haven't gone out of business, they should have because they're working too hard, getting too little, uh, giving up their life for um, no dream at all other than becoming their own boss. So the whole idea was that they could become their own boss and they're either working for somebody they can't stand or can't get a job, so they gotta create a job and they become self-employed. So the vast majority of companies in the world are really jobs for the people who own them. Now, unfortunately, they're doing the wrong work. So they've never learned the difference between working in a company, in a business, doing the job, and working, as I say, as a true entrepreneur does, on the company to invent a company that works without you, not because of you. Why did you choose to be a small business guru, so to speak? I mean, after helping that one person and you know, you've been a saxophone player, you've been, you know, and, and uh, all these different things. But we're just trying to get an understanding of how you said, right, this is it. This is exactly well, it, what it, I want to do. It, Save the small business it, community. So it's, to like, speak. it's like a voice uh, awakens inside of you. That's what I call the entrepreneur within, which is the subject of my latest book. Um, it awakens. It either awakens or it doesn't. And if it does, what most of us do is put it to sleep because it's dangerous. I mean, essentially it's saying fly against all of the odds, do something that you don't know how to do, create something that you've never created before, pursue a path that's impossible to pursue, look at how many fail, look at how few ever make it, and um, then what? Well, that called me. And I've always been called by the impossible. So I never, work for anybody else. I was never um, on the job, so to speak. The only job I was really on, my very first job, was when I was going to school and I worked in a, a Ford plant and I was a janitor. And I was working at night, um, obviously to support myself going to school, and I was changing a light bulb and I'll never forget <laughs> it. The, the boss came up to me and he said, you don't look too happy, Gerber. And I said, I didn't know I was supposed to be. <laughs> and he said, no, you have to be happy here. Um, that's part of the, 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 the game we play. And I said, yeah, but i doing the job. And he said, not good enough. Unless you're happy, you gotta be gone. And that was my last night there. Mm. And I never had a job since. I've always worked for myself. I've always worked as an independent contractor. I've always worked out there on my own, all alone in the cruel, cruel world, trying to figure this stuff out. So you gotta say that I was never bitten by a career, mm -hmm. never. You've really always been an entrepreneur at heart, haven't you? Well, I don't know if I've always been an entrepreneur. I would say that I was a technician suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure, mm -hmm. like everybody else, until I started Emith Worldwide. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Emith, I truly, truly um, awakened the entrepreneur within me. The entrepreneur within me said, this is what you're here to do. This is your calling. I didn't know why. I just knew that this was my mm -hmm. calling, and I was going to do it. Was that shortly after your first consulting gig with that, that Bob friend of yours? Oh yeah, it was shortly after Bob, there was a second consulting agreement, a third, a fourth, a fifth, mm -hmm. and I began to see all of these um, companies mm -hmm. that weren't working. I mean, essentially I was working with broken businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what I learned uh, shortly after, after I created Emith Worldwide, is that in fact was the business we were in. We're mm -hmm. in the business of working with broken businesses. And the fact of the matter is all businesses are broken. All you have to do is walk into them, you can see it. This doesn't work, that doesn't work, he doesn't work, she doesn't work. Nobody knows where they're going, <laughs> there is no dream, there is no vision. If they ever had one, it was to become my own boss, go out on my own, and take home all the money, but there is no all 
all the money and there is no dream and there is no satisfaction from it other than doing it, doing it, doing it, busy, 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 busy. And as I began to realize that, I began to ask that question more and more and more and more. What's missing in this picture? And it was obvious to me that nobody else was asking that question. You gotta understand, this is back in the 70s mm -hmm. when yeah. nobody was interested in small business. No, it was mainly high Fortune 500 consulting work. Right, the, I mean, the, the nobody was interested in small business. The, the, you know, the, the, the guys that I talked to called my clients mm -hmm. the walking wounded. In other words, <laughs> nobody was interested. Nobody. Interesting. Um, and that probably is also what stimulated me. Mm, mm. When we come back, we'll uh, explore the rise to success. One over a million copies of E-Myth and 70,000 clients. How did that happen? We'll be right back. And welcome back to The New Millionaire. We're here with Michael Gerber, author of The E-Myth and founder of E-Myth Worldwide. Now, Michael, tell us about the journey from you know, a few clients to this phenomenal success, you know, acclaimed as the number one small business guru. How did that happen? Well, it's been a long time. It's been 31 years. It didn't happen overnight, exactly. No, but. 31 years of dedication. Uh, I had a dream. I had a vision. I had a purpose and I had a mission. My dream was to transform the state of small business worldwide, no mean feat. I had a vision which, did, which was to invent the McDonald's of small business consulting. In terms of the systems? In yes, the, the system. It had to be a system. It had to be a world-class system so I could do it with kids. In other words, I wanted to do it just like Ray Kroc did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do it with kids at minimum wage um, with a absolutely no knowledge whatsoever of business who I could teach my expert system to who in turn then could bring that to any small business owner for less than the cost of a minimum wage employee. So the, the, the mission, the purpose, the vision, and the dream were very, very clear. And had that not, not been true, we never would have invented it. So understand we had to invent the perfect system. And that's essentially what we invented. What's missing in every business? What's missing are all of the skills, the knowledge, the capability, and the understanding that's needed in order to create a world-class company. Give us an idea. Like, I have a small business. I'm a mom and pop, you know, store selling burgers. <laughs> Whatever. Right. How would you Whatever. go in? How would you actually go in? And would you help them systematize? From everything. marketing to management to everything. hiring and everything your docking and do. everything for Everything them. they do. Like you had a template. Think about it as the franchise for McDonald's. you got to understand it was a hamburger stand. Mm -hmm. So it was the meanest of the mean businesses. You could buy a hamburger anywhere. You could buy a hamburger everywhere. Mm -hmm. You could buy french fries everywhere. You could buy a milkshake everywhere. So what in the world would lead Ray Kroc to believe that he could create the McDonald's that we know today? with over 35,000 stores, over 600 stores, started last year in China. Mm. How in the world do you do that? Well, you take the ordinary, um, a business that's a commodity, and you turn it into a product. And then you productize the way that business works. Well, anybody can do that. Um, you think about Starbucks. It's a commodity. It's coffee. It's tea. So what in the world did they do? They created a world-class business operating system, which is at the heart of the brand of Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And then you grow it. Because if you can't do that, you can't do that. If you can't create it in the first place to work, like the most successful small business in the world, mm -hmm. which is what Ray Kroc called it, you'll never be able to scale it. So the first thing was that. The second thing is that. And once you see that, you see you can apply that to anybody. And so my job, I realized, was to become the Ray Kroc for every independent small business owner. I needed to bring my system to every small business owner, not to get them to do what I know how to do, but to get them to do what they needed to do to build a brand, to capture a market, to turnkey it so it could be managed um, expeditiously, absolutely certainly every single time and that's what we did so we taught them how to do what Ray Kroc taught his franchisee to do uh -huh, uh -huh. gave them a system to do it built their system over our system and the process did something nobody had ever done before 
And in terms of the book itself, I mean, I, I've read this over 10 years ago, but this was written, the E-Myth was written back in 1985, was it? 1985. 85, and yeah. how did this become such a phenomenon itself? Well, word of mouth. It's word of mouth, wasn't it? Word I, of I, mouth. I read, you know, it was absolutely the, the most Just handed out, I, I think I gave this way. to a few people myself. Yeah. Word of mouth. Um, um, people tell me that all the time. An accountant tells me, I give the e-myth away to all of my clients. An attorney tells me, I give the e-myth away to all of my clients. So after people keep on giving the book <laughs> to their clients, and the client begins to give it to his brother-in-law, his sister-in-law, whomever and whatever, and it's word of mouth. And what they say every single time, and this is so amazing, this has occurred over 31 years, uh, what they say every single time, it's the most important book I've ever read. Because it just gave them that simple insight, yet so profound that if you don't create a system, you're your own worst boss, and you've, you basically Absolutely. have to do everything yourself. Everything yourself, um, driving yourself nuts. Now, the interesting thing is, when I was reading your second book, Awakening the Entrepreneur Well, Within. it's my eighth book, Eighth book, actually. I beg your pardon, yes, but you had, right. a, you had a franchise of these ones, there didn't a whole you? There are a whole bunch like six of e-myth books. Like six or seven of e-myth. Yeah, e-myth Manager, e-myth Mastery. Um, the e-myth physician, mm -hmm. the e-myth contractor, and on and on and on. Yeah. Now, when I, I was reading this book, it was, it was great that you signed it for me. Very, thank you very much. <laughs> the Awakening the Entrepreneur Within. I think it was the forward or the preface where you said you you kind of had a, a midlife crisis at age sixty nine, and you had this conversation with your mother who who helped yeah. inspire you to reinvent yourself. I mean, well, bef the, the, before we get to this interesting yes. story, let us take a short break. <laughs> okay. And we'll come back and hear uh, In the Dreaming Room project and, and this new book. We'll Good. be right back. We're here today with none other than Michael Gerber, author of this new book, Awakening the Entrepreneur Within, the sequel, you could say, to the highly acclaimed e-myth. Now, you mention in this book, a business without a dream is like a life without a purpose. And you had a new dream, a new vision just recently. Tell us about that, 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 that process that you went through. Well, I decided uh, after a long, long time that it was time for me to get out of my company, e-myth. Um, in order for it to go and grow and do the things it needed to do. So I brought a CEO in. CEO then turned around and brought a new executive team in, and uh, they turned about the task of growing Emith worldwide beyond where we'd already done it. Um, so there I was. I'm, I'm suddenly free to be the chairman of the board. I'm spending three hours a month rather than three hours every hour um, working on the company. And um, that big question, uh, now what? Were you thinking semi-retirement or? No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was, ne it was never semi-retirement. This is about s three years ago. Yeah. You were 69. Yeah. I'm, I'm now 73. I was 69. Wow. It was 2004. Um, and no, I'd never thought of semi-retirement. It's just now what? Mm -hmm. And um, I was writing a new book. I was um, speaking around the world. I was doing things that anybody would love just to do. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't enough because I didn't really feel, and I still don't feel, that it actually done what I set out to do that long ago when I started Emith Worldwide. Um, I needed to do it, and I didn't know what was missing to do that. And, um, so you're it, with your mother, who's 96 at the yeah, time. Yeah, I, I was sitting with my mom, um, who has just recently passed away. Oh, um, and um, I was describing this terrible bewilderment I was in. And she looked at me with this greatest smile, which my mother had. Um, and she said, Michael, um, I've never known anybody more creative than you. Um, what you don't know is you're about to discover something new. And that's what's driving you crazy, because you, don't, you haven't captured it yet. And it just struck me. It just struck me that it's not about anything that I've done. It's about something I'm about to do. Mm. And um, I was having a conversation with my brother-in-law, who happened to be uh, Martin Sklar. Marty Sklar is the um, um, executive um, vice chairman of uh, Disney mm. um, Imagineering. So Marty worked with Walt Disney uh, all of his business career. And Marty's been present at every new park that Disney opened. 
And Marty told me a story about Walt, and it had to do with this whole subject of dreaming. And I said to myself, that's what I got to do. So it's just like you never know when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You understand? You're in a conversation. You're sitting here talking to somebody, and suddenly something comes, and it moves you. So you've been helping small businesses for the last 30 years. But All these years, but a dream yeah. was missing. And I realized that was the greatest single missing piece in all of our client companies. I understand we could fix them. We could help them to go from um, broken to whole and whole to successful. But they never went beyond that. They never really went truly someplace that I could imagine them going. It was my major disappointment all my life. Um, uh, the disappointment was I couldn't get my clients to be as excited about their business as I was about mine and, frankly, as I was about theirs. They weren't clear about their vision. About They never had a dream. They never had a dream. Understand if your dream is to get rid of the job and get rid of the boss. <laughs> that's not a dream. You understand? A lot of people know what they don't want. They don't right. Know they, they know really what they want. don't want. What they want is to become their own boss, to go out on their own, to do their own thing, et cetera, and so forth. But that's the, the, the limit to the clarity of it. Um, and understand Walt Disney never would have created Disney if that's what he was thinking about. And, um, and, and Ray Kroc never would have created McDonald's if that's what he was thinking about. And I never would have created E-Myth Worldwide if that's what I was thinking about. So the real question is, so what do you want? And I realized I had to create something to enable people to awaken that spirit of entrepreneurship inside of them, and that's the dreaming room. Tell us a bit more about the dreaming. It's coming up actually this weekend. I'm, I'm so glad I, I'm able to participate. It's it's like a workshop. How would well, you, you describe? Well, you can call it anything you want. It, it's really um, a, an entrepreneur incubator. Incubator. It's not the incubator for the business. It's the incubator for the entrepreneur because you got to understand. To me, the entrepreneur is asleep in everybody, but I believe we're all born with an entrepreneur. We're born to create. Born to create. We're born to create. We're born in the image of God. We're born to create. We're born to create heaven on earth. We're born to create a stunningly, stunningly new and exciting um, world. We're here to create things. And the question then is we're measured by what we create. And so to me, if we create something that has no meaning, simply consumes us, um, gives us a job every day, well, that's about the meanest thing we could ever create. There's something more. And so the something more is what I want to touch people with. So it was a great uh, adventure for me to start the Dreaming Room, to awaken the entrepreneur within people who presume themselves to be entrepreneurs in some case, who have no idea what I'm talking about in another case, and have no idea what in the world's going to happen with a blank piece of paper in beginner's mind. And that's what we do. We go on this extraordinary um, awakening adventure and discover true entrepreneurship in every form and in, in, in a staggering way. And you'll see that this weekend when you come. Oh, looking forward to it very much so. So it's a three-day process. People, you'll help people define yes. their mission, their purpose, their vision, and their dream. Exactly. So we'll actually have a website. Down, down at the bottom, you can check out the website and get more information about this in the Dreaming Room workshop, facilitated by Michael Gerber. And this is really the pilot year, isn't it? it Next is. year, you'll be teaching other trainers and so on and so forth exactly. to expand this worldwide. So if you want to experience this live with Michael Gerber, please check out the information on our website, and uh, you, know, we'll, you can go from there. So anyway, Michael, this is the, um, the beginning of a, a new incredible journey. And if you can inspire a new generation of, of you know, new entrepreneurs who can define their purpose and passion, you can change the world. It will change the world. And that's very exciting. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you again. Look forward to uh, come back again. You promise? Yes. Okay, absolutely. Absolutely. Terrific. That's all for another edition of The New Millionaire. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon.